It is a great honor for Kulanu, not the political uh, group, to be a co-sponsor of the International Conference on Anusim. Salman Rushdie wrote in the story of his hiding because of the Iranian fatwa in his novel Joseph Antoine, a memoir, wrote about himself, quote, this unhoused exiled Satan was perhaps the heavenly patron of all exiles, all unhoused people, all those who were torn from their place and left floating, half this, half that, denied the rooted person's comforting, defining sense of having solid ground beneath their feet, close quote. This is a gathering of those whose forebearers were a group that over times, millions of times over, lived lives similar to Rushdie in hiding and under a different sort of fatwa. I was asked to speak about what Kulanu does for Anusim. Kulanu is an organization founded over 25 years ago to support emerging, isolated, and returning Jewish communities around the world. Emerging communities uh, are communities that lived Christian, Muslim, and other lives before they found Judaism as what they call the true religion, which spoke to their hearts and their true selves. Their histories and beliefs do not include stories of their Jewish origins. Example of Kulanu communities um, are the Jewish communities of Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire. Isolated communities are Jewish communities that were established long ago, have few Jews remaining, and are far from Jewish resources. Two communities like these are Suriname, founded in the 1600s by Spanish Portuguese Jews, and Nicaragua, founded at the turn of the last century. Returning communities either are communities whose histories, often oral, claim to be the descendants of lost tribes like the Bene Ephraim in India, the tribe of Dan in Liberia, B'nai Anusim, many more in number than the Lost Tribes, are another category of returning Jewish communities. The return of Anusim are part of a worldwide trend and new phenomena which is challenging established Jewish norms and ways of thinking. It is our belief that after the Holocaust and the destruction of Jewish communities in Arab lands, it is time for us to rebuild the Jewish people while still rebuilding our homeland. Kulanu is a volunteer organization with a budget of 300,000. It is multi-denominational in that it addresses Jewish needs across the Jewish spectrum of ideologies. People have asked me, what is the main way that Kulanu supports communities? I always say we validate their journeys. We tell them that what they are doing is amazing, important, and is challenging the course of Jewish history, is changing the course of Jewish history and the definitions of Jewish peoplehood and what it means to be Jewish. We say that the worldwide Jewish community wants them, needs them, and loves them, and that we appreciate what they are doing, and that they clarify for us what it means to be Jewish and are on the cutting edge of this definition. While this may seem obvious, individuals and communities who are struggling to create their Jewish identities <laughs> often lack real models on how to do it, feel isolated, and are often shunned by family and friends. Kulanu volunteers come around and say, wow, we are often the only ones who listen to their stories, publish their work, link them to others, connect them to resources, believe in them, and take them seriously. Kulanu sends suppl Jewish supplies, sidurim, tefillin, mezuzot, to B'nai Anusim communities and others. When we can, we donate to them Sifrei Torah. We Torah scrolls. We send teachers. Sometimes we set up Skype classes. We send them to study in Israel. We publish articles. We share their photographs and videos. We have funded projects in Latin American countries. Currently, we have two people who have helped develop Judaism with B'nai Anusim communities on our board, Daniel Schechter and Rabbi Barbara Yellow. Daniel, with his backpack, single-handedly is helping to develop many new Anusim communities. 
of young people with Converso roots. Danielle writes, quote, Kulanu has helped many Anusim communities that otherwise would have received no support from the Jewish communities in their home country or from abroad. Oftentimes, in their own country, these emerging groups are viewed as menacing to the mainstream community, who fear them for their previous religious affiliations, racial makeup, and often lower social class than the existing Jewish community. By bringing Jewish activists, teachers, rabbis, and cantors to volunteer in the emerging communities <coughs> across Latin America, Kulanu was able to show them that their paths to Judaism, whether proven as the descendants of Muranos or not, are important to world Jew Jewry. By helping these communities network among themselves and slowly but surely work towards inclusion to the mainstream communities where possible, we validate their search to be part of something greater. Close quote. quote. Rabbi Barbara, known as the radio Barbara, uh, ra radio rabbi, has also helped to develop the Jewish community in southern Italy. She writes, quote, as a Bat Anusim, daughter of the forced ones, I have personal experience with this tragedy. My own ancestors, Spanish Jews, were forced to flee Toledo, Spain, then to Portugal, then to Sicily, and finally to the mountains of Calabria to escape persecution, arrest, or death. In fact, my great-grandmother, Angela Rosa Grand, was a direct descendant of Matteo de Grand, a neophyte or new Christian, whose property and goods were confiscated by the Inquisition authorities in the Sicilian town of Naro. The family was arrested for Judaizing. Finally, settling in the tiny mountain, vi mountain village called Saristretta, but given their frightening experiences, they chose to continue their clandestine observance. For centuries, they lit candles on Friday evening, abstained from eating pork, and when a loved one dies, they sat on low chairs and covered the mirrors throughout the house, which they practice till today. Thanks to Rabbi Barbara today, the Jews in Calabria hold services and classes and have two new chavurot in Sardinia and Matera that have donated Torah scrolls, scrolls, one thanks to Kulanu. They are egalitarian and open to interfaith families. Barbara says, we do not force the non-Jewish partner to make conversion. Our personal histories date back to Inquisition times, affirm that forced conversions are always problematic and never appropriate. A word on Kulanu and Nicaragua. One of the communities that Kulanu helped develop and where I am and have been personally involved was that of Nicaragua. The official community consisted of a remnant of the pre-Civil War community of Jews of Eastern Europe and Central European origin. Along with this core group were the children and grandchildren of Jewish men and Nicaraguan women and a number of B'nai Anusim families who are both called participants rather than members. The religious teacher of this group was a man of B'nai Anusim origin, Carlos Perez, may he rest in peace, who had <laughs> studied in various yeshivot in Israel and the United States. Kulanu arranged with the help of Beit Din Tzedek Latfutzot, Badatsli, the rabbinical court for the diaspora, the conversion of 28 participants, turning them into full members and immeasurably strengthening the community. They performed eight weddings, chupa and kiddushim at that time. A bat mitzvah took place and three Jewish babies have been born since, the first three in over 50 years. Another group of B'nai Anusim that grew out of a listserv called Descendants of Moranos, who had previously been Messianic, moved toward Judaism, and are currently seeking to arrange their conversions. They call their community Nicaragua Sifarad. We also facilitated reform conversions in Guatemala. A word about Beit Din Tzedek Latfutzot Yisrael, Badatzli, the rabbinical court of the diaspora. A group of halachic shomer Shabbat rabbis have joined forces to promote and help develop Jewish communities around the world. They serve as teachers, marad atras, and gather as a Beit Din to perform conversions. In this context, I have to mention the emerging community in Madagascar, where over 100 people underwent orthodox conversions through Badatsli and facilitated by Kulanu this past May.
A word about Kulanu's work in El Salvador. Over the course of many years, Kulanu funded a yearly Beit Midrash Torah study program for three months at a time in Armenia, El Salvador, and a Hebrew school. It is a community that considers itself to be B'nai Anusim and Orthodox. From this program, a daily minion was created, prayer service was created, that, which exists until today. This group is presently working with Shavei Yisrael to ultimately make Aliyah. Future needs and directions. What Kulanu would like to see happen for our B'nai Anusim communities. More Torahs donated, funding for Sidurim, Machsorim, uh, Mizuzot, funding for Badatsli to continue its work, more academic study, more, public, more publicity and news coverage. But the main wish is to make this work mainstream, to break barriers towards integration, to find them a home and to have them welcomed back with open arms. In closing, S Salman Rushdie's exile finally ended. The fatwa was removed. It is my hope that the work that Kulanu does and others do to help B'nai Anusim reintegrate into the worldwide Jewish community will for them end their exile. Thank you.